somehow living in a remote place makes information doubly important. And it is at the creamery in the cold light of early morning that men with horse carts, men with tractors and cars and donkeys assemble from all parts of the parish. Men from Lissy Griff and Clonacaline, Baltine and Ballyrissa, Dura Road and Ballyvold, and westerly men from Tour and Cahir. papers, the post, and parochialism, an inward spiral of communication. World news from the examiner, and news from the letter of a beloved one in Boston or Birmingham. But most important of all, the swapping of local intelligence, mart prices, the time of the funeral, the price of seed potatoes, the whereabouts of the vet, communications that matter. The OPEC countries are another man's problem. It is also at the creamery that we see an example of the neighborly spirit of a community like ours. In the unloading queue, you help the man in front of you with his churns and the man behind also. In return, you have two helpers when your turn comes. So it is in our little village. My empty gas cylinders are replaced without my asking for it to be done. A gentle voice will simply say, I thought you would want for to have me get a cylinder of gas. Everybody tries to help somebody else, and important roles are filled voluntarily. Our hair is cut by a man who is really a lorry driver. There is somebody to do the laying out if we have a death in the village, and somebody else specializes in grave digging or mending punctures, or whatever needs to be done. Before we had running water or main sewerage, Someone attended to those needs. These people were neither elected nor selected. Nobody ever appointed them to do these tasks. The need existed within the community, and quite naturally, somebody stepped in and filled that need. Now, we all have a job here for which life experience, or perhaps some special skill, has fitted us. Uh, I'm a scrivener. I have a typewriter. I know a lot of these little problems that arise when somebody's insurance should be filled when somebody wants to renew an insurance, or even when pensions at one time or another have to be renewed, well, I will know to whom to write and uh, type it out for him. Um, each of us has a duty of some sort like that, and this is mine. So each day, just before two, I go down the village to catch the post. And this is where my day usually begins to fall asunder. I may drop in for a drink, and the rest of the afternoon dissolves in talk, or I may be summoned to chat with foreign visitors. But we have many, and I'm blessed with a certain linguistic ability. 70 penny of telephone. And 70, as gentlemente, me dice adesso. Così. Do you want 70? 70, sì. Même des autres, des Belges, qu'il avait lu. Quanto per il whisky? Due ieri sera. Ah, sì. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like one of the earth guys is in here. Obviously, chatting to foreign visitors gives me another opportunity to help our little community. For their enjoyment of the locality is essential to our economic survival. Of course, they also brighten and enliven our social lives. So the best of that is really among ourselves, in little gatherings like this one at Castle Murphy. Barbara couldn't shame me, so he had to go and lay me. I was bobbing up and down like this. When I arrived back in Rossler, I was thirsty, I declare. I called for a drink, it was rum, I think, and it let my pockets bear. I thought for to drink it down with a tumbler in my fizz. My chin went whop, I spilled every drop. I was bobbing up and down like this. Bobbing up and down like this. Bobbing up and down like this. My chin went whop, I spilled every drop. I was bobbing up and down like this. Bravo. 
My own place has its share of ballads too, like this one from Fleur O'Driscoll about the coming of the bus. Communications again. On the 5th of December 1949, the Corps Empire in extended their line. Twas victory for Goline that the bus ran till through. When outside of McCarthy's, the crowd there did queue. Okay. They were not long there till the hotel did blow. And in from the now came the bus fine and slow. With a crow there too greeted, the flag went up high. No wonder old Hackney drivers have reason to sigh. When the bus had gone out to disgust, they began. A new way of living they started to plan. Says Liam, it is finished, the whole thing's gone flap. I'll convert my garage into a big shop. Then Danny stood out saying no more drives to Cork. I'll chuck up the damn thing and go back to New York. I'll there buy a taxi as I did before, where passengers are plenty and money galore. And of all the boys, Tim was the smartest by far. He had looked far ahead when he bought a big bar. With it stacked up for Christmas, he'll cut quite a dash. Saying to hell what the boss, I've got plenty of cash. So now we a plan settled out in West Cork. We have Liam in his big shop and down in New York. And Tim in his new bar will reign like a king. With his friends all around him saying, fill him again. So now to conclude and to finish your song. We hope that we didn't detain you too long. With a bus from Goline, we can go for a spin. And we'll think on the 5th of December again. And that is how Goline got its bus. Five miles away, Goline is our capital, our transport terminus, our communication center. Like the other little places along our peninsula, it is invaded by the sounds and colors of the sea. Goline is our supply center. There you can buy a fathom of rope or a yard of knicker elastic, a mantle for a lamp or an elegant hickory handle for a scythe. It is our Switzerland and our Saudi Arabia, having both a bank and petrol pumps. As well as having four public buildings, again of the better kind, it provides us with our postal address and a most helpful and efficient telephone exchange. Unlike many villages of its size, which have shops carved out of the hallways and front rooms of dwelling houses, most of the buildings in Goline were purpose-built as houses of commerce during the latter part of the last century. And indeed, some have been converted back into dwellings, holiday flats, or guest houses. The tradition of trading here is a long one, from humble crossroads market to proud and prosperous little service centre. 